So we're actually in the 706 notes at the end. Um, this week we're going to look at, um, from 706, the PDF number 29 and the PDF number 30. So that's where we are um, on the first page, lower half of the first page of number 29. I should clip out the uh, material at the top, which is still on dip filtering, because I want to talk about splitting and full separation of operators. And so in typical Clairvout fashion, I'm going to set this up uh, by talking about some data types. So let's suppose that we have a 3D zero offset survey. So you have a wave field that's recorded at different values of x, at different values of y, um, different values of, of, uh, of z, okay, uh, and time. You're going to use to, you know, to downward continue, say, from z equals 0 to, uh, um, to all uh, depth z. You're going to use a uh, downward continuation that relies on having a velocity that varies only vertically. Uh, v bar z, so that's the horizontally averaged uh, velocity, um, and which can vary in any way with respect to depth. And then, as I said, um, we have uh, h equals zero, half offset equals zero. Um, so our, um, you know, for this, since it's zero offset, we still use the exploding reflector model. Okay. And here's uh, our little zero offset uh, source receiver pairs that are scattered over the surface of the Earth, usually. And then there's our exploding reflector. And we're going to record the, the waves coming from that exploding spot uh, in, uh, you know, all across the surface. So that's a, uh, uh, at least uh, for, um, uh, that would be a 3D uh, uh, ocean pinger survey, for instance. And this comes from a, um, an interesting reference by uh, another one of my um, academic uncles, uh, Dave Brown, um, published uh, back in uh, 1983, another Clairbout uh, PhD. So um, all right, just for simplicity, let's take uh, constant velocity. And how can we migrate 3D data like that? Okay. Uh, as you knew from 706, our 15 degree paraxial extrapolator in retarded time uh, only had two terms and uh, was very simply this. You know, we could use retarded time since we have uh, v bar as a function of z only. So, um, this, uh, uh, just to remind you of the notation here, this uh, term on the left side is uh, d squared q dz dt. Uh, the partial derivative of the uh, uh, retarded time wave field Q is equal to V over 2 times uh, d squared Q dx squared. All right, and that's what we use for 2D data. All right, so uh, you know, just by going through the, uh, uh, the derivation again, um, you know, as we did for the 15 degree extrapolator for 2D data, and uh, we, we got there from a uh, two-dimensional acoustic uh, wave equation. If we start instead with a uh, three-dimensional acoustic wave equation, it looks like this. Same left side, uh, d squared q dz dt is equal to v over 2 times uh, now the quantity d squared q dx squared plus d squared q dy squared. Okay, So as kind of makes sense, we also have to incorporate whatever we can find out about the Y direction um, derivatives of the wave of the wave field. You know we can't just use x. We need to migrate in three dimensions. So uh, as we uh, have done before um, in 706, we can transform into the now kx and ky domain in the uh, in in uh, the Fourier space domain space uh, axes. And then, of course, from uh, time to omega still. And our, so our extrapolator looks like this. And we could concoct this as a 3D phase shift migration. Um, and then uh, even um, you know, develop a Stolt uh, migration. 
Okay, so we have the downward continued Q, uh, which is now in terms of uh, in the Fourier domain kx, ky, um, and z. It's at a, uh, uh, a known depth uh, z in the section, in the physical section, still in terms of omega. It's the surface data transformed uh, in three dimensions, right? It's a three dimensional um, wave field uh, as a zero offset survey. And then uh, here's our, uh, our very familiar uh, 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 downward continuation operator as, an, as a Fourier domain exponential. Uh, and you can see, again, all we had to do is uh, wherever we see kx squared, we just uh, have kx squared plus ky squared. And that gets multiplied by z uh, that we're downward continuing to, and then also times iv divided by 2 omega. So there's a uh, 3D phase shift uh, migration. So um, you know, as long as we can transform and handle 3D data volumes, uh, this can work. And um, um, you know, this is not uh, a size that uh, is uh, especially daunting right now. Um, but it does uh, even even this uh, fairly fairly small uh, survey. You know, only a thousand by thousand uh, x and y locations um, is still going to make us uh, pause a bit uh, because at uh, four gigabytes, you know, it starts to be a little more trouble than um, uh, you know your average uh, your average file to flip around. You know, that's uh, um, bigger than uh, most movie files, so we got space on it, uh, space for it on our disk, but uh, you know, fitting it all to into our uh, laptop's RAM could be um, could be uh, uh, a little bit uh, tough. Okay, certainly not nearly as tough as it used to be, but uh, uh, still uh, a little bit tough to put the whole thing in. And and now you know, let's um, you know let's let's take it at uh, uh, six thousand points per trace. And uh, we could easily have 10,000 x locations and 10,000 y locations for uh, you know data sets. I'm sure you guys have seen. And so that's a uh, you know that could be a stack zero offset data set. And um, uh, and all you want to do is migrate that thing. Um, and uh, so what do we got here? Uh, we'd have 10 to the probably about 10 to the 12th uh, bytes. Um, that's a uh, a terabyte, and um, you know. So then we got to figure out. Uh, all right, when we're doing the uh, Fourier transforms and the and the necess just as just as for two D data, you know, um, you can't fit it all in memory. You've got to uh, uh, use the uh, the card trick uh, transpose uh, operation that I that I showed you back in seven oh six. So uh, you know, and how are you going to do that in a in a machine with uh, ten thousand CPUs, right? That's the problem. Then it, it becomes a, an enormous uh, uh, you know parallel programming problem, and uh, you know you've got to employ some uh, some very smart uh, GPU uh, uh, programmer to uh, to solve that in, in an efficient way. Um, and so you're just starting your company, and uh, you know you don't quite uh, have the money to uh, um, to try to uh, recruit a uh, a GPU programmer away from Silicon Valley, and so you try to figure out a way to do this uh, this three D migration with the the codes you have, okay, which are all two D, and they all run easily enough, and as long as you can write disk files serially, you know, and not trying to do uh, you know, random access to the disk file, you're probably going to be okay. So, um, just suppose, uh, you know, trying to be clever here, we could pick out one plane of this of this volume, and just migrate that plane. Okay. So, you know, we take a plane at constant y, and that's just exactly the migration that uh, you know it's a migration of uh, x against t, and we're going to result in a section uh, in x and z. Okay. So we we migrate, you know, we can we can easily, uh, you know, right on our laptop, um, you know, which is maybe that's all the startup money you have, uh, that and uh, and uh, uh, food to eat, you know, you're trying to get contracts uh, to migrate 3D data sets uh, 
for uh, as little startup money as you can as you can get. So you can't afford the cluster. You can't afford the uh, uh, the uh, GPU programmer, uh, but you can afford to do this. So if you're clever, okay, you try this, right? We'll just go through that whole 3D data set, uh, that terabyte data set, and um, uh, pick out one plane at a time, migrate it, you know, and then we, um, uh, you know, you, you are going to have to figure out how to transpose that data set all at once. And so then you take the result of the x direction migration, then you pick out the, the constant x planes, and you migrate them against their slopes, uh, the slopes of the events in y. Okay. So really, this this you know what you're trying to do, to um, you know just to get started, um, is to do the whole 3D migration as nothing but successive 2D migrations. Okay, and you know we already know how to do 2D migrations, and we can we can do them in um, um, you know with all, under all kinds of uh, different conditions. I, I just described how to do. Uh, 2D pre-stack migrations for any uh, crazy uh, velocity um, heterogeneity. Uh, you might even, uh, you know, you might even have to try that on some of the planes uh, where the velocity model is going uh, going nuts. Um, so uh, you know, as long as you can do the transpose, and you know, and I showed you the card trick. Um, so uh, uh, you know, you have a method of of pulling out these planes. Um, doing the transpose, pulling them out again, and uh, once you have a 2D plane, you can migrate it easily. All right. Now, turns out if you can show that uh, uh, you can divide your 3D extrapolator or separate it into two different 2D extrapolators, okay. Then uh, you have a, an absolutely valid, um, uh, an absolutely valid uh, uh, procedure. Okay. In other words, by by separate by uh, you know fully separating the process, if you can divide your extrapolator and 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 if certain other conditions are met, then this uh, successive two D migration could in fact be exactly as good. As the full, um, you know, three D migration, which you can't quite do yet because you need access to a cluster and a and a good um, uh, a good GPU programmer. Aren't you only bringing in energy from two azimuths, though? Uh, well, okay, so so uh, that's that's certainly one of our first thoughts. That's going to be, uh, you know. That's going to be uh, uh, something we got to watch out for. Okay, yeah. what are, you know? So, so what exactly are the conditions that are going to make this exact? What are the conditions that will make this acceptable? Okay, and what are the you know? Are there some conditions that would make it utterly fail? All right, so let's check that out. All right, so so the first question. Okay, I've got a question for you then. All right. This, uh, uh, if you want to do a 3D FFT, that's all you're trying to do, not a migration, just a 3D FFT. Could you do it fully separated this way? Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so already you know, you know, and, and are you? Is that an approximation? Are you giving giving up anything? No. It's yeah. it's perfect. It's mathematically perfect. Yeah. The the um, um, the operators in different directions in a in a 3D uh, Fourier transform, and thus the 3D fast Fourier transform. Okay, those operators in, di in different directions are fully separable. Well, they're they're um, um, they're 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 split. Okay, first of all, yeah. you can write them separately, and then the whole thing is fully separable. As I've as I've described, you could do your x direction transform. You know. Mail a disk off to uh, to a different company, and they could do the y direction transform. You can mail a disk off to a different company, and 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 that third company could do the the z direction transform. You can't do them at all at the same. You you can't do them uh, all in in uh, in parallel. You can't send it to three companies at once. Yeah. Um, which you know uh, might be a way of getting it done 
quicker and cheaper, but uh, but you need to feed the output of uh, of one transform into the into the next. Okay, so so we do know of some you know very interesting and important uh, operations like the FFT that will work this way. They work exactly. Um, so okay, what kind of migration then can we do? All right, with the same sort of cheating. Okay, so what we're uh, what we're doing is we want to solve uh, d squared q dz dt is equal to v over two times the quantity uh, d squared q dx squared plus uh, d squared q dy squared. Okay, the initial conditions in that full solution are um, q is a function of um, of uh, x y and uh, uh, we have z at uh, zero, and uh, and for all uh, time, okay. That's uh, uh, that's equal to uh, our initial condition q um, q uh, q sub zero um, for x y and t our three D da data set. So uh, what we're solving instead, you know, that's what we want to solve up there. What we're solving instead is is this. Um, we're applying a two D Solution in the x direction. So uh, here's this notation. I think I got this notation from Clayton. So it's probably, you know, I, I'm not saying it's it's beautiful or consistent, but uh, it works for this anyway. Um, so this is uh, saying uh, d squared q dz dt is equal to v over two times d squared q dx squared, right? And as you know, that's a solution only in the x direction. Um, and so I put this little uh, green uh, uh, x in parentheses over the top of the the uh, the term. Um, and the initial condition, of course, is uh, still that z equals zero, and that's uh, q zero. And then after that, we solve the the split problem. Okay, we do the y direction totally separately, ignoring the uh, the x um, uh, derivatives. We we say that uh, the y direction d squared q dz dt is equal to v over two um, uh, times d squared q d y squared. So you can see that this operator has little y's over it. Uh, and the 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 initial condition in for the y operation is the result of the x operation. Okay, that's why it's got that little x. The q there has a little x over it, and and it's already downward continued to delta z. Okay, but only in the x direction. So we're feeding that as if it was still at z equals zero for the y direction. Okay, and then we identify that the full solution, you know, which is the q fully downward continued to delta z, is the solution to the y. You know, which has taken the x as the the x result as the initial condition. So for each z, so in a gas dag phase shift migration, for each z step, okay, we then um, pull out um, um, uh, we pull out an x plane. We do an x migration, and and the result of that gets plugged into a y direction migration, and then the output of that. Is a uh, uh, is the fully downward continued um, well downward continued to our next delta z. So here's a 3D migration algorithm using split operators. So first we uh, however we do it we have to uh, uh, which is it is fully separable. Okay, we have to do this 3D Fourier transform um, of uh, of q. At x, y, and t. Remember, this is zero offset data, and um, and so that, of course that's going to get us q at k sub x, k sub y, and omega. Okay, now there's there's a this is sort of a program here. There's a uh, um, uh, there's a, an outer loop which is the z step. Okay, and this is critical. You know what is the outer loop, and then where are the different uh, parts of the of the migration located. All right. So then there's an inner loop that for each x plane we migrate in using k, k sub x, okay, using the x direction derivatives. 
And then, and this is still under you know every single z step we go through this loop, right? So uh, we transpose the whole data set, and then for each y plane, we migrate using the the uh, derivatives of the wave field in y. Uh, and then we're all done um, with the outer loop too, because we go through all the z steps. So you know, however many z samples there are, however many z steps there are, that's how many transposes of the data there have to be. Okay. Um, and and the um, we just do one big inverse Fourier transform from Q of k y k x and 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 all z uh, back to um, uh, it's only a two D uh, successive two D Fourier transforms. You know, at each uh, z step. Okay, and that gets us the uh, the 3D migrated volume back in the the physical domain. This is called uh, what what Clayton and Clairbaut call splitting. Dave uh, uh, Dave Brown called splitting. Um, we'll have errors on the order of delta x squared. Okay, uh, and actually uh, uh, the there there are er the errors are also on the order of Delta z squared. Okay, so it's it's you know the errors are really no more than the error that we have in any finite difference problem, and uh, in any finite difference solution, and those errors, as as you probably suspect, are smaller than the errors due to velocity error and and the velocity uncertainty that you have. Okay, um, and so you know we're not. We're not really satisfied here because we still have a gnarly, you know, transpose of our uh, of our uh, one terabyte data set that we have to do at you know at least a thousand times. So that's a royal pain. Um, but uh, um, you know, it's uh, uh, notice that that this you know we could use. Uh, uh, we could use a gas egg migration for you know assuming we have uh, and, and that would work for any um, any z direction changes in velocity and even if we um, were doing a finite difference migration and, and um, had to use a uh, uh, a thin lens term you know that allows some lateral velocity variation right um, then. Uh, uh, you know, we could still, we could still, um, uh, we could still accomplish the three D migration using nothing but our existing two D migration programs, just applied in different directions. So you know, there the the transpose becomes the real uh, the real time consumer. All right, um, and so you know, this this is uh, this is going to be accurate enough. It, it is an approximation. You know, but it's going to be accurate enough, and and really, velocity doesn't matter. Um, you know, we could any any way we have of solving uh, for uh, lateral you know lateral velocity variation in two D. This makes it apply to three uh, D so long as we're willing to transpose uh, enough times because we have to transpose at lots of different uh, z steps. And that's really key here. We can't. We can't just. Uh, this won't be accurate if we only use a few z steps. This is dependent on, on you know, gradually stepping down. Its its accuracy depends on that. Okay. So what if instead we only transposed once? Okay. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, I'm going to split up the outer loop. Um, there's really no outer loop anymore. There's a there's a loop for each x plane, okay. It's still the same Fourier transforms on the outsides. There's a loop for each x plane, and then in each loop, I mean, there's a loop for each plane in each direction, right? And inside that loop is uh, is is a loop for all the z steps. So we do the full, you know, what what happens if we did the full Gazdag migration uh, of all the planes that at uh, in in variable x at, at constant y, and we and then we did one big transpose, which you know we could figure out how to do that, you know to uh, 
to complete the contract, right? You just have to do this once. Um, and then uh, for each y plane, okay, you go through, and then and then inside there is the loop through all the the z steps, okay. This this procedure with only one transpose, it, I call uh, uh, Dave Brown calls full separation. All right, this is obviously going to be much faster because there's thousands of times fewer transpose operations. The migrations take the same number of operations, you know. Uh, but it's really the transpose in the tra in the fewer transpose operations that we that we gain here. All right. Okay. So let's figure this out then. Um, when is when is splitting valid and when is full separation valid? Okay. Uh, really, what I'm going to define here is the validity of full separation. Uh, but before that, I'm going to I'm going to define the um, the, the amount of error that we get just with our splitting. Okay, so um, here's our uh, uh, our migration in the x direction, our downward continuation in the x direction, right? And there's the the product of that in the x direction um, for all z, or at the next z step anyway. And then here's the uh, the one in the y direction, right? Which takes in the product of the x direction, okay, and yields the full downward continuation. Okay, and there's its operator in y. If we substitute, um, uh, if we substitute this one in for qx, okay, then let's get the the whole thing, right? So um, you know we start with uh, um, let's see uh, q zero. Uh, um, of course, it's in the Fourier domain, and here's the uh, the substituted in x direction um, exponential, and here's the y direction exponential that's next to it, right? And then, of course, just combining these exponentials, look what we get. We get that full that full three D solution. There it is. Okay. So, um, um, you know, this is, you know, with these operators. Um, and this is wrong. Full separation splitting is valid for these uh, for these operators. Okay. Um, and now notice that these operators are not you know they're taking uh, velocity into the Fourier domain. So um, this is a constant velocity solution. All right. So I guess it is true. Yeah, full separation is valid for constant velocity because we can express it this way in the Fourier domain. Uh, when, in general, is full separation valid? Okay, uh, and so I'm going to, you know, go to algebraic operator speak here. Okay, whatever our operators are, we've got operator a, um, and you can see I put uh, two uh, bars underneath the uh, the operator, and it's got its direction uh, on top. So operator a is in the x direction, and operator b is in the y direction. Okay, and uh, and these are downward continuation operators. Say so, dQ dz is equal to operator a plus operator b, and um, you know in general these operators they can you know the derivatives in them for instance and and the pieces of the operator they can depend on x they can depend on y they can depend on z they can they can take derivatives in x they can take derivatives in y. We're not. Why are we not taking derivatives in z as well? Because that's what we're calculating. Okay, we're calculating the derivative in z. Okay, it's a downward continuation operator, so that it's not generalized totally here. Um, okay, so we have operator a in x plus operator b in y, and you know operator b can depend on all the same things, and that's operating on our data our, on our wave field q. So to separate. Um, we solve first, you know, dQ dz is equal to a applied to q, and then uh, after that, we 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 apply uh, dQ dz is equal to b applied to q. Okay, and uh, these are in different directions. Now, the the these two solutions, one and two, 
they are the same, they are algebraically equivalent if the operators commute. In other words, if you first apply B uh, and then apply A, you get exactly the same result as if you had first applied A and then B. These operators are, uh, you know, the algebra here is right associative, um, <clears throat> you know, because these operators are, are operating on Q, which is off to the right here. So, uh, you know, the first one is on, on the right side is A followed by B. Uh, and uh, the first one on the left side is, is B followed by A. If, if, that's, if they're equal, then you can fully separate. Okay, right? There's no, you know, first you do the whole uh, migration in X, and then you come back later and you do the whole migration in Y. All right? So uh, if the operators commute, that works perfectly. All right. So that's, uh, uh, and, and we'll examine when the, you know, here's our general setup for the operators, okay, what they depend on. And here's our condition for uh, when they commute. Uh, so we'll say more about that later on. OK. Uh, first, uh, OK, now, now we're going to examine the validity and the uh, error involved in splitting. So we're extrapolating downward at small steps delta z. OK. So from uh, you know over the whole depth range we want, call it z0 to z1, we've got big N z steps. So n times delta z is equal to z1 minus z0. Um, and we extrapolate by applying this, this operator, let's call it d, to, uh, to q it at, uh, at z. Okay? And with that gives us q at z plus delta z. Uh, now Q is a column vector, um, you know, and it's it's uh, the whole wave field, whatever its dimension. But here I'm writing it as a column vector to keep things as uh, you know to be able to talk about these operators as matrices, but uh, they're still operators. Um, so uh, uh, D1 is equal to you know because right this is step one. Um, and we're going to allow our operators to change with depth because we know velocity changes with depth. D1 is mostly um, an identity operator. Okay, so you know, just going from z to z plus delta z is not going to completely change our wave field. It's just going to incrementally shift our wave field. Okay, because D1 is mostly uh, an identity operator. But uh, there's a little bit more than that. It's delta z times uh, a1 plus b1. Okay, so we have these split, you know, algebraically uh, 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 split operators. All right, and um, you know, here we're not worrying about whether they commute. We're uh, we're just going to apply them. Now to go further, okay, say to go from from you know, z to, to z plus 2 delta z, we would apply a d2, right? We, apply, we take uh, our q at z, and we apply d1, and then we apply d2 to the result of that. So uh, here's, uh, you know, basically d2 operating on d1, and the product of that uh, operating on q. So it's kind of like squaring the operator. To go further, we just keep multiplying, you know, by d3, by d4, you know, and most, you know, most of each d is identity, but you know, there's there's each one is different from identity by by delta something scaled to delta z. Okay, so we just keep multiplying the operator by itself. Okay, and we apply d n times. So really, what we end up with here is d to the nth power. If they were all the same, it would be exactly d to the nth power. OK, if for each application of the operator, if we had error proportional to 1 over n, OK, that error would be unacceptable by the time we got all the way to z1 after n steps, because then we have 100% error. 
and we're not willing to accept that yet. If the error of each z step was proportional to 1 over n squared, then after n applications of the operator, the error only accumulates to be proportional to 1 over n okay, by the time we get all the way down. And if, there's, if n is large, right? if n is 100, then it's 1%. If n is uh, 1,000, like it usually is for us, um, you know, it's a tenth of a percent. That's OK. That, that, that amount of error we can live with okay, and profit from. All right? So uh, uh, again, uh, not, this isn't the validity of splitting so much as the validity of, of full separation. All right? So splitting, this is uh, splitting, just writing it, uh, you know, extrapolating down with these. Uh, uh, if, you can, if you can apply the operator and do the transpose for every z step, then um, uh, then you you're you're okay um, uh, as long as you have enough z steps. It's an approximation, but the errors are pretty small if you got enough z steps. All right, and that that only you know this kind of splitting up on this page here only requires um, only requires the ability to write the operators separately and apply them separately. Okay. Um, Yeah, we've downward continued the most times, right? And um, and what you know, what is our down? You know, in, in downward continuing, we're also adding you know error from the data. We're also add, and and a lot of the error from the data comes because of errors in the velocity that we're using. So um, you know, we try to avoid getting to a hundred percent error in velocity by the time we get to the, to the bottom. But sometimes, you know, that's that's all you've got. Well, it's I mean, one over n squared makes it in, in the n you're counting upwards to go down. Would it be yeah, like one it, over n minus? It's you know the we're 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 we have to downward continue from the surface because that's where our data are recorded, right? Yeah. So so you know if we if we were to go in in one application, if we were to go all the way from zero to a kilometer depth. In one step, we'd have too much error because we've only got you know we'd have 100% error because we only got one application of the operators. Okay, if if we were to go you know delta z is one kilometer. Okay, if we were to go uh, a thousand steps down to that one kilometer, um, we would get a thousand times more accurate result. Okay, everything else being equal. So that's that's the that's the uh, that this is this is the error for each for each application of the op operator. This is what would happen if the error was were you know proportional to these for every delta z step. So the error that's the error for the whole thing for each step. And here's the error for the whole thing, right? That's the error for the for the uh, for each step one over n squared. That means that once we've Multiplied one over n squared by n, we have we have error proportional to one over n, which is okay. Okay. As long as we have lots of steps. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. This is the validity of of splitting. Okay. Or the error that's involved in splitting. So we've got uh, the operator d is i plus uh, a plus b times delta z in the in the two directions. Okay, let's look at a split process. All right, that's uh, in the x direction. That's i plus a delta z, and then in the y direction, that's i plus b delta z. And so we um, we uh, um, uh, this is what we're going to use. Okay, in the split process, how close is this to to this? All right, so we multiply it out. We get i. Plus a delta z plus b delta z. Okay, if and if, we, if we were done, then then we'd be exactly right, right? But we're not done. There's still this cross term. Uh, a applied to b applied to um, applied to uh, the the wave field, and that's times delta z squared. So the the this is the error, right? 
our, our split process gives us our exact d plus error that's proportional to delta z squared. So the split process differs from, from the full 3D process d only by something proportional to delta z squared. Okay, So since delta z is equal to uh, z1 minus z0 over n, that means that the error of the split process is proportional to 1 over n squared. Okay, for one for each delta z. That means if n is uh, if n is large, right? You multiply one over n squared by n, you end up with one over n. Okay, so splitting, as long as you can write the operators separately, as long as you can write the the split operators. Okay, the split process. So here I was able to write it. Okay, you can always use splitting. All right. And and as so long as you you know do a lot of split processes and therefore a lot of transposes right, then you can always use splitting, and it always works. It, it's an approximation, but it works well enough. Okay. So uh, uh, you know this says nothing about the commutivity of the operators. Uh, it just says you can write them separately. So splitting is an approximation. Uh, but its error is small enough always. Okay. Now, what about full separation? All right. We uh, we have the full three D process a plus b in x and also in y. Um, and we've already split it into two operators applied sequentially at each z step. Okay. So q at z zero plus delta z is equal to i plus a delta z. Uh, applied to the result of i plus b delta z applied to q at z0. Okay? So to get from z0 to z1, right, we've got to apply these two operators, these two split operators, many times. So this is a multiplicative series here okay, with this capital pi here. So we're going to go uh, and we're going to apply you know, this element once uh, for each z step. So we're going to apply it n times. So we have pi for j equals 1 to n. That's all of our z steps. Okay, and we can have uh, different operators at uh, different z steps, right? We got um, uh, i plus uh, 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 a uh, at j, and we could have b at j if we wanted. Let's ignore that for now. Okay. Um, so uh, we're going all the way from z0 to z1, and we're going to do it in some large number of n, capital N, uh, z steps. All right. And if you start multiplying this out you know, for something reasonable like uh, three or four steps, okay, you'll find out that if a and b commute, you're able to collect terms, and you can rearrange it into the fully separated application of two multiplicative series of operators. Okay, so you start with you start with uh, 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 with q at z zero, and you apply the full downward continuation, you know, n times through all the steps, and you get all the way in the in, here in the y direction, you get all the way down to Z1. And then you take the result of that and you apply the, uh, the operator in the x direction, the a operator, the i plus a. So this is a fully separated process. And when you, can you do it if a and b commute? And this is the, the math, which I'm failing to show. Um, and I uh, don't think Dave Brown shows it in his paper either. Uh, you know they don't want to have a page of algebra in uh, in geophysics. Um, I suppose these days, uh, you know, they would have made Dave publish the page of algebra as a PDF in in the electronic supplement. Um, and I think uh, I think Dave might have used a an early version of Mathematica to show this um, uh, back at that uh, back at that time. 
<clears throat> okay, so uh, uh, and you can convince yourself of this if you uh, if you try it for uh, you know some small number n. Okay, uh, you know maybe three or four you could do it. Okay, so um, you can if if the operators commute, you can rearrange into the fully separated operation. Okay, so you know picking out all the y planes and migrating all the way, and then one transpose in here, and picking out all the x planes, and migrating all the way. Okay, so the the conclusion of this is that we can always use splitting. And we can we can always you know no matter what we can uh, do a transpose for every one of our of many z steps, and our approximation our our split approximation is going to be good enough. But if the operators in the x and y directions commute, okay, for whatever problem we have, then we can use full separation and we can transpose just once. All right. So let's let's get back to uh, 3D migration. All right, you know that was a lot of uh, that was a lot of algebra. All right, consider the travel time to a point scatterer, um, which we're going to regard as an exploding reflector, in two dimensions. We'll call that t1. Okay, t1 squared is equal to z squared. It's its depth over v squared plus uh, the difference in x locations. Uh, you know we got a receiver at x zero. X minus x zero quantity squared divided by v squared. All right. So uh, now let's let t zero equal be equal to z over v. So t one squared is equal to t zero squared plus uh, the quantity x minus x zero squared divided by v squared. All right. T one is a travel time under the exploding reflector model. So we can think of migration as mapping an event at t one in the data. Uh, to depth z, uh, uh, or time t zero in the model. Now suppose we're looking in the y direction. Okay, the axis here is y. Okay, we've got our exploding reflector. It's at location y. We have a, our receiver is now located at y zero, and just like that, the we let's call it time t two. Time t two squared. Is equal to the same t zero squared plus y minus y zero quantity squared divided by v squared. So we're migrating three D data that's at x zero and y zero and depth zero. And first we migrate with the two D equation, and then with the and then in y with the with a very similar two D equation. Okay, so we migrate in x. With t1 squared is equal to t0 squared plus uh, x minus x0 quantity squared over v squared, and then in y we take uh, uh, you know the total time t squared is going to be equal to t2 squared with instead of t0 t1 squared. Okay, so we plug in the t1 there, and then we finish it by you know adding the y minus y0 squared over v squared. Now, if we substitute this single star equation here into this one, what have we got? We've got the total time t squared is equal to t0 squared plus x minus x0 squared over v squared plus y minus y0 squared over v squared. But wait a minute. That was just, uh, that's the exact travel time equation for a point in 3D. Okay, that's because that's just the, the uh, that's just the uh, uh, um, the hypotenuse in three D. Okay, uh, and and by doing our uh, our our split operators, we still got that time right. There's no approximation of the time by splitting the operators. Okay, so we get the you know. This is valid. The splitting and separation is valid for. Uh, it has some validity for 3D uh, migration because the travel, the si simple travel time equation, is uh, is perfectly good. Okay. So the 3D migration equation is composed of 2D migration equations, 
and that uh, indicates this, the full separability of the process, okay, as long as this equation is valid. And what makes it valid or invalid? Well, it's the it's the constant velocity here, okay. So again, for constant velocity, we got full separability. We always have splitting, as long as we have enough z steps. But you know, uh, for full separate for full separation, uh, we do need that constant velocity. Okay, so our three D migration is fully separable when. Okay, uh, let's look at the velocity, and I think I'll have to um, make this point um, next time.